Hi, this is Ronnie and this is another interview from the Woodstock Fruit Festival 2014 and I'm with my friend Grant Campbell. So Grant, maybe a, give the viewers a quick summary of who you are and how did you end up where you are here as a pioneer at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Okay, so I'm also known as the Raw Aussie Athlete. I'm Director of Education at Food and Sport, so I work with Dr. Douglas Graham, uh, which involves a lot of things from editing books, the latest recipe books coming out, which are pretty cool, the Simply Delicious series, uh, helping out at the, all the Dr. Graham's retreats, um, as well as running the Certified Lifestyle Coach Program with Dr. Graham. Uh, yeah, cool things like that. I run ultramarathons, I've run 50 ultramarathons in the last 10 years. Every year I get faster and stronger and, and it's just, I don't know, it's a good deal. I like it <laughs> and run further than ever before. In December I just ran a 140 mile race yeah. from the ocean to the highest mountain in Australia. Uh, went really well. How did I become a pine here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival? Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know, just, just known for, I've been doing, doing this lifestyle for, for nine years and uh, when the festival was starting up I you know, already knew Mike Garnstein, who was organising the festival, and we got on pretty well. And uh, I don't know, we just respect each other's work and, and support sure. each other, so it's been going well ever since. Sure. And <coughs> contrary to some, uh, what some people have said, you are running these marathons. You're not like <laughs> I've heard. I've heard claims that you actually walk these events rather than run them. What's your thoughts yeah. on that? <coughs> yeah, Durian. Durian Wright, Wright is a bit of a larrikin. He, <laughs> he's, a, he's a cheeky guy. You know, we all love the, the way he, you know, like he makes things up. We all know that. Right. But we love the way he does it. It's, it's funny. But, you know, I don't like the stuff where he starts attacking people personally. But, sure. yeah, I took that. That, that video was, wasn't, that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy going compared to some of his, his tough <laughs> videos lately. But uh, yeah, no, I do run. I do run races. <laughs> I didn't take off two and a half hours off my race time by brisk walking. <laughs> um, you know, well, last year I, last year I, I you know, there was 108 people started in a, a race in Australia. One of, like, it's a really, really tough race. Um, very accomplished field of runners. It's very challenging to to even enter that race. You have to have a lot of good qualifiers, and uh, it's called the Great North Walk Hundreds, and. It's got a lot of elevation gain and loss. It goes through the, through mountains. It's 109.5 miles, and there were 108 starters, and only 31 finished. So it's yeah. like a 70% dropout rate of of people that have done amazing things, way better runners than me, and and they're they're dropping. Sure. I came 22nd out of 31. So sure. it definitely involved a heck of a lot of running. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess something I want to touch on is your journey from sort of corporate lifestyle towards what you do now, which seems to be travelling a lot, not wearing a lot of clothes, uh, teaching people about health and fruitarian diet, uh, 8 10, 10 diet, so why did that change happen? Was that a natural shift or when you started to eat more healthfully, what happened then? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I've always kind of been an academic kind of guy. Um, so getting in the corporate world, I, I enjoyed, the, <coughs> I enjoyed ch um, the challenge of solving complex problems for businesses, and I enjoyed working with teams of really intelligent people. Uh, Andrew, you, uh, Andrew, 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 I appreciate you shouting, but we were doing an interview. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even notice. <laughs> That's That's okay. right. I tried to be subtle, but. <laughs> <coughs> okay, shall we just? Start that question, or we'll uh, just continue. yeah, we'll just keep going. I'll, I'll have to try and <laughs> <to something. laughs> um, Okay, so I started out in the in the corporate world. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that environment at first because of the I really enjoyed solving complex, challenging problems uh, for businesses, sure. and I enjoyed working with the teams of really um, you know academic people, gifted, talented people in different in, in different areas. Some managerial types, some creative types some really like high-tech geeky kind of types like like I was and um, yeah I really enjoyed that and poured myself poured my heart into it and found the work uh, kind of really interesting but what I realized was that over time uh, I, I realized more and more that the work wasn't fulfilling it didn't really I never thought about my work afterwards with pride or it, 
it just it was just some problems I solved, which was great. But uh, it, for what purpose? To help a, a city build be bigger, to help uh, insurance companies get richer and banks get sure, richer, and, sure. and it just it didn't have any meaning for me. So I came across the term lifestyle coach, and, and I went, oh wow, I'd never heard of it before, and I was like. It's like wow, that's I want to do that. Yeah. That's that would be fulfilling. That that I'm really interested. So I started I was just starting to have the first thoughts about how to switch from being an IT specialist yeah. to to being a lifestyle coach. And uh, and it's like two days after I saw found out that term, I saw that Dr. Douglas Graham was offering uh, 801010 certified lifestyle coaching program. Right. And it just it, it seemed too too much of a coincidence because I was already doing 801010. For, uh, for about two years, um, just uh, yeah, like from when I went raw, so from when I first came across the Perfect Health program, yeah. Dr. Graham released, I'd already gone, yeah, so I've been living that way, and uh, to, for him to be offering that program, in, in, which is what I decided I want to get into, it just it seemed too, too much, too good an opportunity to sure. pass up, so in November 2007, I signed up for the CLC program, and and yeah, graduated through that program over, over a number of years, and um, that's where I kind of learned all the stuff about anatomy and physiology and health sure. and science and common sense and sure. all about ripening a fruit and all the yeah. you know, all the plethora of information that's collectively about living a vibrant, healthy life. And I guess you've incorporated that into <coughs> your your own retreats and events that you're running. Yeah, so I run a, a retreat in Thailand every year in May in peak fruit season. It, the next one will be May 17 to May 30. Uh, it's in Chanthaburi, Thailand, in the southeast of Thailand, down near the Cambodia border. Just a three hour bus ride from, uh, from Bangkok. Uh, it's where they grow the most fruit in Thailand. It's, it's uh, amazing, you know, most of, a lot of the fruit that goes to Chiang Mai comes from Chanthaburi. Right, right, right. Uh, or from Rayong, so, you know, Ch Chiang Mai has great, great fruit, but it's a bit more expensive and, sure. and, and it's coming from far away. But um, Chanaburi is just a fruit mecca. Um, we go and climb trees in, in fruit orchards, and we have fruit buffets underneath the trees where the, where the fruit was harvested. Uh, you know, we climb durian trees, mangosteen trees. We, we go. We have Thai massage nearly every day. We we make uh, you know amazing dinners. We have a head, a lead, a head chef there to make make some really delicious 80 10 10 raw vegan dinners. Um, we eat pretty simply during the day, which is just fruit. I buy fruit according to what people prefer. So if people love mangoes, I buy tons of mangoes. We do a cruise down a down a river. We go to beaches with monkeys and go to waterfalls with nine tier, nine levels. And I mean, it's just it's just wow. a wonderful adventure retreat, full immersion into the lifestyle for two whole weeks. It's totally affordable. Um, it's fourteen hundred dollars for the for the two weeks. And. Uh, it's just, and we have lots of group discussions and really open. Yeah. It's not so much like a. a um, it's not me up there giving lectures, telling people this and that about living this way. We have questions and answer sessions, so people can ask the questions they have. But I'm finding that as the years go by, that more and more people coming to the, to the retreat are savvy 80 10 tenors already, and they just want to come and party with friends and have an amazing time. It's like a, like a holiday. Yeah. And that's uh, really cool. But, and and it's, everyone always grows through the experience of being around each other in a in a wonderful tropical environment with abundant fruit and you know, the, and we stay in a hotel. We have um, got nice big beds and a, a western bathroom, toilet and shower. And there's air conditioning, or you can open the windows and get fresh air. It's really big rooms, very comfortable. And yeah, it's, yeah it's, I, I love Chanthaburi. I go there every year. And, I spent three and a half months in Thailand this year. That's it was brilliant. Awesome. So, I guess I want, <coughs> what I want to go into is what's your vision for the future? And what's your, how do you want your life to go? And how does that involve maybe this community? And what's your vision of how, how that will ma manifest, I guess? Yeah, well, I, I mean, we see changes happen over the years in this movement. Um, you know, things always, always work out. So we're just kind of going to have to be flexible about how things go. I don't really know exactly what shape things are going to take, but I know that something I value really highly in life is, is helping other people to, to, to grow and get into this lifestyle and, and go all the way, not, not be held back by 
due to self-imposed inhibitions or sure. misinformation or yeah. whatever it is, and, and to and, and to help people to grow emotionally and face those things that are beyond diet, because um, there's so much more than just diet and fitness and yeah. getting enough sleep. There's a lot of lot of stuff inside our inside our minds that needs to be processed. Yeah. Um, yeah so I, I just look forward to <coughs> continuing that process. Um, you know, I may get into um, more of a consulting approach at some point, yeah. or I may just uh, I really don't, I really don't know, don't know exactly what what form it'll take. For now, I'm totally happy working in food and sport, and it's rewarding. Uh, I love spending a few months in many different countries yeah. around the world. I've only been in Australia for five days this year, so <laughs> this is the first year I've, I've missed winter completely yeah. too, which is quite an experience. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I love life. I love my life. I love the way it's going. Uh, every year it's changes in slight, slight and subtle ways, but, yeah. but um, always for the better. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm just going to stay open to opportunities and cool. And uh, just, I mean, just never been happier than, than being part of a community like this, like at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. It's, it's just astonishing. This everyone wears their heart on their face. It's <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. One, one thing I'd like to say, um, you're kind of an expert on, you're seen as an expert on not just the aspects of health that are concerned with diet, although obviously speaking about that, but the whole aspects of health, the process, you know, the, the practice of natural hygiene, I was wondering, what for yourself, what, what things are you still working on, what, how can you still improve on your health beyond just diet and exercise? and What's, what's, what's your challenges at the moment? Yeah, my challenges would still be, I guess, um, hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm always working on, on, on strength and, and fitness. I'm always, every year I'm improving my running times and I'm running further and I'm, I'm lifting more weight. Sure. Um, just set a PB in deadlift on the first day of the festival here. <coughs> and that's all great. So, you know, there, there are challenges in, um, like you just go out and run a fast 5k and you're kind of left with the question could I have gone faster yeah and and what is it that sometimes you back off and, and was it really my body failing or did I like was it my mind saying right. you better stop before you're at any remote risk of hurting yourself and and so just finding that line of, of where you're really being true to yourself and 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 going all out in whatever your pursuits are in life um, or whether you're kind of being held back by self-imposed sure. inhibitions or self-limiting beliefs or whatever you call it. Uh, you know, in relationship areas, is it definitely an area that, that is an area of growth for me. Um, so, yeah, see what happens in that, in that domain over the years. Um, I, know, I just, I, I just uh, love, because I, I, I grew up not kind of being socially awkward and yeah. not feeling comfortable like around getting really close to people and like looking them in the eye and I, I, meeting someone I wouldn't know whether to hug them or yeah. kiss a girl on the cheek or just <laughs> nothing or, and so there's this kind of awkwardness and so I really I really enjoy every year I kind of finding ways to get closer to people yeah just friends relatives and it doesn't matter what what relationship it is but just uh, I just find it really rewarding to, to be able to kind of feel like, like you're almost inside somebody's head yeah. to some degree as much as they'll let you let you let you do that so and helping other people to experience that level of openness and sharing because uh, it's really powerful and then to to not be afraid of um, being vulnerable with your emotions as well and that holds a lot of people back so it's something I always kind of challenge myself to, to just grow more in and like when, if you're gonna cry about something then just cry don't don't, yeah. don't like avoid looking at people or or go and hide or hide in your room or yeah. but just embrace that emotion every it doesn't matter whether it, it might feel it might feel challenging, but but embracing every everything you feel as as a, as a growth opportunity because sure. it always is. So if people want to get in touch with you, where, where can they find your information and your contact details? So go to rawaussieathlete.com. Uh, there's a contact page on there that has my Facebook and my, you know, everything is on there. My email address even. So um, yeah, I'm pretty easy to contact. I'm on all the all the platforms. But yeah, rawaussieathlete.com has all the information about my retreats, has 
articles I've written about, like race reports. It's got all my running times sure. for everything short or long that I've done in pretty much the last 10 or 15 years. And um, yeah, that's, that's okay. the place to find me. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Grant. Thanks for talking. Thank you, Ronnie. Pleasure. And like, share, subscribe to this channel, these videos, and we'll probably see more from Grant soon. Stay tuned. <laughs>